Hello also few videos back we had created this mapping wherein we pulled the records from transactional or OLTP table and try to update or insert those records into my dimension table. So if we look at the mapping again this is my employees table uh, or transactional table and I am trying to insert or update those records coming from source into my dimension table. So this is my dimension table dim employees and I am using this upset operation okay, provided by ICS uh, mapping. Now since now if we look at so this is my source so I just have 107 records so let me take the count all right so this table has only 107 records so that's the reason why so this mapping completion of this entire mapping doesn't take much time it's pulling all the records from source so if I run this again so let me save this guy and let me let's say truncate my dimension table and let's say let's execute this guy again so what it will do every time when I run it it will pull all the 107 records and try to insert or update so right now my target table is empty so it will try to insert all the records in my dimension table so let's take the count count star from okay 107 records got inserted if I rerun it it will again pull all the 107 records even though nothing is updated nothing is inserted it will still pull all the 107 records and it will try to update every single record again even though there is no change it works okay if there are less number of records but let's assume your source table has millions of records so if we go with this logic right every time pull all the records and try to update them into target table it's very inefficient operation because to load the fetch to fetch uh, millions of records itself will take time and updating that will again take more time so the intention is how, how we can avoid this or what is a better option to pull uh, to do this functionality to update the records at target table so in data warehouse terminology we consider that as an incremental load so what incremental load exactly means so it has same 107 records so this is this we call it as a full load full load operation right so what full load means it's pulling all the records from source and try to update all the records or try to insert all the records in corresponding dimension table okay but it's very inefficient operation if there are millions of records at source table so to avoid that there is something called incremental load now what incremental load means you identify identify only newly created records or newly up recently updated and try to insert or update only those records so let's assume out of millions of records only 10 records got updated or one record got created so in this case 10 plus 1 10 updated records and one insert one newly created records only pull all those 11 records out of maybe 100 million records and try to insert or update in corresponding dimension table so in this video we are trying to recreate that scenario so let's assume this is your employees table now it has 107 records but let's assume it has millions of records now uh, out of those millions of records let's say I update only I update only one record let's assume so if let's say emp dot star so let's say I update only uh, employee ID 171 all right so I updated this with uh, let's say eight thousand dollars okay and I up I'm updating with this updated on date okay so ideally uh, my mapping should fetch only this updated record okay and it should not fetch remaining 106 records okay so how can we achieve that so basically as I'm as you can see here I'm updating this updated on column so one uh, prerequisite is your source table should have created at created on and updated on column okay who columns by which you can identify which record got recently created or recently updated if you don't have then you cannot I mean there are different ways 
even you can achieve still but the easiest approach is like you should have created on and up or up and updated on not or you should have both the columns created on and updated on columns now how i am creating my so in order to fetch only that recently created and recently updated records you need as i said you need to have these two columns so i am uh, using the coalesce operation that means what if the records got created recently that means its corresponding updated date would be null all right so in that case i am using coalesce so if it is null then go with the created on that means the record got created newly if it's recently got updated that means the updated date will not be null so that uh, sorry created date will not be null so that's the reason why i am using giving giving the preference to updated on if it is null then the record is created newly so use created on now let's say uh, I, I loaded the record still let's say today is what 10th february i loaded the record till 10th february so i need to store that load so that's the reason why i have created these two these two uh, tables okay so in dw jobs i will maintain it's kind of a, a primary table i will just maintain the mapping name and in corresponding dw job runs right as you can see here right i will be maintain so whenever my job gets triggered right i will be maintaining that job run okay and let's say based on this last execution date so let's say i ran my job two times as per this record set right i ran my job two times so as per this record set uh, i need so this is the last execution time this is the last time when my job ran successfully okay so i need to pull so as per this right uh, i have inserted or uh, i have pulled all the newly created and newly updated records till this point okay now when next run will happen my mapping or my source qualifier should pick only those created or updated records which are after this date okay and that's the reason why i'm using this inner join so if you look at this statement right what it's saying is my job ran two times okay now out of these two times give me the latest run date latest successful run date so that's the reason why i'm using maximum okay so give me the latest successful run date and my source should fetch only those updated or created record which are after these run date all right so this will definitely give me or by this way we can definitely implement the incremental load okay we'll try that we'll see if this logic works so before i recreate the new mapping what i will do is i will keep this is a master table i will truncate this table okay now this table doesn't have records so if i run my inner query okay let me run this this way let's say max successful run date now th this table is empty okay so there will not be any single entry for this particular job name so if i run this it will give me null so very first time when we haven't run at all it will be a full load so that's the reason why when it is null i will be using 1900 so that very first time when there are no records in my dimension table i will truncate this dimension table also so my dimension table doesn't have any record so now if i run this query it will give me all the records because my last successful execution date is 1900 i never ran this mapping so let me do one thing let me go back to this upset mapping and uh, what i will do okay let me close this guy and uh, where is my mapping maybe next I will okay upset this guy and I will copy this mapping copy to uh, same folder keep both and I will rename this mapping let's say upset and I don't want to use upset I will use incremental load 
it's very simple mapping main logic is in source qualifier query itself so if I check my source qualifier so I still have employees table but instead what I will use I will use this query so query validate and let's say preview data it will give me 107 records so first 100 records only so that's fine so data looks good I'll click OK now this is also fine okay this is just a pass through expression and the target so target also there will not be any change it will be same upset okay this is all fine now the problem is moment this gets loaded all right my target table go gets loaded I also have to insert as you had seen earlier I also have to insert one record corresponding to this job corresponding to that mapping okay now how would I insert that and first of all why it is required because that is how we are configuring configuring the incremental load or that is how we are identifying which day to date date to pick up okay so that's it so as you can see here we are identifying the maximum last execution runtime okay so that's the reason why we have to make sure at end of the mapping will also insert record into this table so what I will do for that I will add another pipeline here so source uh, target and uh, yeah I don't need expression that's fine we can add expression also but that's fine for time being so SRC uh, let's say DW job run now the source is uh, I can use even simple select statement so thing is what I need is uh, job run ID we already know right so it's these two values right job run ID and job run this is the auto populated column identity key so select one as job ID then let's say as job name and last successful execution date is get date as last successful execution date okay so we'll use this query uh, query perfect and my target table would be DW job runs so target maybe I will just rename it and it will be always insert so I will keep it that way and field mapping so job run, job ID job name and last successful execution date I will save it now there is something called uh, if I go here there is something called flow run order okay this way we can control which so there are two pipelines now okay so which one sub which one should get uh, executed first and which one should get executed later so now as we see we have to insert records into this target table only when the dimension load gets finished all right so that's the reason why we have to ensure this is at second and this is this has highest priority and this has second I mean you can just change this execution but this is the correct order okay so once my employee load dimension load gets finished then only I will have to insert records into DW job runs I will save this guy I will save this guy and let's execute so now since there are no records let's again validate so there are no records in my dimension table and uh, also there are no records in my DW job runs table this guy will act as a full load because this inner query will give me 1900 and it will pull all the records okay so let's see that
perfect oh it 109 records so because 107 records in dimension table and one record in dw chop table so i will just let me comment this guy okay one record got inserted now as per our earlier mapping wherein we haven't implemented incremental load if we rerun the job it will again pull 107 records and will update same 107 records in, in in target table now since we added that filter criteria here now if i run this guy it, this inner query will give me today's date all right today's date and time when it got when, when the mapping got finished if i run this entire query again what it's trying to do is give me from this employees table all records which got updated or created after this date and time right now there is no record okay so if i run this guy it will not give me any record so if i rerun this thing it will not give me a single record and that is what we wanted if there are no new insert or new update we should not fetch those records we should not fetch old records and again update them okay we should fetch only those records which got recently updated or recently created now to okay so it got inserted one record because it inserted into dw job runs second we ran that mapping for two times so basically it's recording that what we'll do now let's change this uh, salary to ten ten dollar okay for employee id 171 and at the same time i'm also using updated on i'm updating that updated on column okay now if i run this guy it's giving me that one record which got recently updated so that is exactly what we are expecting we should as part of incremental load identify only those records which are recently created or recently updated and this is the way like we are now identifying that this record the salary got changed all right so if i run my mapping again it will fetch only that record and it will update that in my dimension table okay so one seventy one where employee id 71 and i should see that as 10 if i go back just two records because one record got updated and another record got inserted in dw jobs all right and if i run this query again it will not give me any records perfect so this is what we were expecting as part of incremental load now there are multiple ways by which you can do that you can implement same incremental load so in this video like we use this um, uh, inner query this logic and implemented incremental load our next few videos we'll see the different approaches of that so thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video